And so today I'm going to show you a couple different entries from Crucifix. Three different submissions. We saw a few of them actually yesterday. Thanks. <laughs> and then I'll show you a couple of escapes. And if you didn't take my workshop, uh, yes, Monday? If you didn't take my workshop Monday, I'll, I'll mention a couple of principles in, in which I work. And one of them being cutting the angles or one of them being trapping the arm, right? So I'm gonna start with a couple different entries. Can you borrow you, please? 101 entry. Crucifix often, often presents itself when your opponent is in turtle guard, right? So they're turtled up. And now when somebody's in turtle guard, they're often in this position. And what I like to do is I like to set it up really nice. When I'm in a, somebody's, or I'm covering somebody's turtle guard, I don't want most of my weight onto the mat. The more surface area that I have on the mat, the more weight I have into the mat and not into my opponent. So I like to sit up. I am knee to knee, hip to hip. I have this outside leg slightly bent, so I have a little bit of leverage, right? And I'm putting all of my weight and I'm putting slight pressure into it. Now I like to come in just like this. He'll keep his elbows pretty tight, but there's always gonna be a little space for you to create a knife hand, come in right near the elbow area, slice it in and I like this chicken wing grip. Now if you see, you're just coming right behind the elbow and you're grabbing the wrist just like this. You're creating this very acute angle and it's really hard for him to get this, this arm back. If he tries to straighten, just the structure of my arm alone keeps him nice and tight here. So I get this chicken wing grip. Now I have to open this opposite elbow. And the way I do that, the way I like to do that, sometimes, first of all, if you're rolling with a lower belt or somebody who isn't familiar with crucifix and they're just wanting to get out of this turtle guard, you can just bait them with this leg. They're gonna grab it. <laughs> and then you lock it up. Now like Danielle said, you're not creating a triangle guard, right? When you create a triangle guard, your, your legs are a little open and the, the width or the circumference of their arm isn't great enough to fill that space. So you gotta pinch your legs a little bit. So I slice it in, get my chicken wing, bait him, he's gonna grab, I just scoop it up. Now I'm crossing my feet, but I'm pinching my, my knees just like that. Say he doesn't take the bait, he's smart. Let's pretend he's smart, right? <laughs> so I gotta get this elbow out. And the way I do that, I'm not going to just try to force it with my, the strength of my arm. I'm not strong. So I'm gonna use my, the structure of my body to pry his, his arm open. The way I like to do that is I like to take this top knee, put it in, so there's always gonna be a little bit of a gap. If he keeps his elbow inside, even better. Inside, right? But if he keeps his elbow outside, there's a ledge, right? So you're gonna be able to get enough power and pry it out, just like this. So I just lift my hips up, get my knee right there in the crook of his arm, and I push my body this way, just like that. Outside leg does all the work. I just lift it, so I take the talon heel, thank you. You take the heel into the crook of their arm, and you just pass it back, just like this. Now he showed a couple submissions from this position, which is great, but I feel like when, as a smaller person, he can go ass up, slide me right down. And if he pops his head out, I'm in a really bad position. Now I'm in bottom side. Right? So I like to roll. I like to put myself and him onto our backs. Get that nice control in position. Slice in, chicken wing. Uh, get my knee into that crook of his elbow. Push out. Get my heel into the crook of his elbow. Slice back. Now from here, you see how the chicken wing works? He really can't base with this arm. So I can put a lot of weight here and I collapse his shoulder. I'm gonna use this outside arm. That's why you can go here. This is great control, it's always great control. But the chicken wing leaves my outside arm free to assist me. So I'm gonna grab the mat. See how my body weight comes over? My toes are on the mat. I keep my knees pinched. I don't want his arm escaping, then I have to do this all over again. Keep my knees pinched, 
I'm gonna propel myself forward. Now, we're in a crucifix position. And the reason it's called a crucifix position is for obvious reasons. Oh. <laughs> There's a reason I chose him. Right? So for I, me- I, I look like Jesus. <laughs> if he cut his hair. <laughs> so we're just gonna do the entry real quick and then I'll show you the submissions from there. Now one more time. Nice control, knife hands, slice through, chicken wing. Find my knee to his elbow, use my body, push forward. Heel comes to the crook, slice it back. Now I have keep my knees pinched together, toes on the mat, right? We're not seal footing. We're free. <laughs> no seal foot, we're toes on the mat. We're gonna use this hand and we're gonna propel ourselves forward. Just like that. You can also pull them back. If, for example, they're a bigger person, they're a lot of weight. Where are you going? <laughs> Noodle. Right? I can't, for some reason, go this way. I'm going to switch my grip. Pull them back. Go back to the chicken wing, always. Do we want to try that? One, two, three. Now we're going to go to the submission. We're actually, I have time. I'm going to go over one more entry. So there's more than one way to do anything. There's more than one way to do an arm bar. There's more than one way to set up a triangle, right? There's more than one way to enter the crucifix. So a lot of the times, especially for the advanced, so on your back. A lot of the times, I don't start from curve, right? I'm passing, I get passed, they underhook, they're trying to shrimp out, I pass around, and then I'm here, before they get to the triangle, or the turtle, right? So I'm here. They cannot turn back into me, because the force of my, or the pressure of my uh, uh, chest on his shoulder is keeping his back from getting to the mat. So he has to turn that way. And before he gets onto his knees, he's gonna turtle up, he's gonna turtle up, he's gonna try to recover guard. Before he gets onto his knees, I'm gonna take advantage of that space that's created between his elbow and his hip. Now, it's, sometimes it's hard, especially if he keeps slightly on his elbow to get the outside leg in. So I'm gonna use the inside leg, right? So turtle, it was the outside leg, we hooked. Now, when I'm on his back and he goes to turtle, I shift my hips. Now, it's the inside leg that comes over, takes advantage of that space, slices it through. It's still a crucifix. Still same principles apply. Often when I have the inside leg, I pull them back. So let's try that real quick. Or if you want to keep doing the turtle guard, if you're a little less proficient at jujitsu, keep doing the turtle guard, but otherwise, I'm oh, sorry. Right? Yeah. Pull them up. One more time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Slower. So you can also start from here. You know? The bottom leg comes in. You're just finding the hole. And a lot of my crucifixes are taking advantage of the hold. It's not technically, like, there's not a sim single technique in which I get there, but I'm just opening my hips and scooping it up. Turtle guard, you scooping it up, scooping it up from the outside, from this back control position, open my hips, scoop it up this way. Now, if you have hip issues, or if your legs are just out here, Often you can stick that knee in, you have to slice open to clamp on the leg. Right? Knee comes in and clamps right, right back on that leg. I don't have that issue, but if you do have longer legs or you're over five foot seven or, or something, try that. Got it? One, two, three. So however you got there, right?
we're here. Now you have a couple options, and the, one of the, the reasons I love crucifix is I can do two at one time. Two of the options entail a choke, right? My favorite choke, especially from the gi. Sometimes it's, a, or especially, especially from no gi. Sometimes with the gi, it's a little more difficult, but with the gi, you have the lapel. You can pull it tight across their neck. Either come like this, right? Or just come and try to single arm it. A single arm choke from crucifix position is one of my highest percentage submissions from this position, from, from crucifix. And the way I do it is I have to slice under. He's not just gonna let me get under here, right? And I have to keep my body, my chest, underneath his shoulders. And I'll show you why in a little bit. But I have to keep nice and tight here. I want a nice little pillow using my body under his shoulders. I'm gonna take this knife arm and I'm gonna just slide it right under his chin, right? It's gonna be just like we did with the chicken arm. It's gonna be really, really difficult for him to defend it. Because one, he doesn't have use of his arms to defend, right? And two, there's no way he can keep his chin tight enough to avoid it. I just slice it right through, right through. <laughs> and I'm grabbing his trap. Now I'm not just pulling into his neck, even though it sucks, it'll cause a little bit of pain, I'm not just pulling straight through. I'm bringing, I'm concentrating on bringing my elbow from here to the back of his other trap. It's not gonna get there, but in the process of doing it, I'm gonna get the choke I want. And those lovely sounds, <laughs> okay? So single arm choke, knife hand, slice it right underneath his neck, grab his trap, bring your elbow from the front to the back, just like that. Say that doesn't work for some, some reason, right? You can always go to the, the rear naked choke. You have to release the, the, the chicken wing though. And that's the reason why I go first to the single arm choke. So I release it, swim it out, same thing. I'm not just bringing it here, grabbing my bicep, just like that, because now he has an arm to defend. I'm slicing it right behind, keeping my chin on the top of my hand so he can't reach around and pull it off. And I'm doing three things at once. Pinching my elbows, I'm using my arm to push his head into the choke, and I'm expanding the air in my lungs. When you expand the air in your lungs, it minimizes that, the amount of space that he has. Sorry. <laughs> Option two. Anybody need to see that again? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone really need to see that again? I do. Okay. Yeah. So, single arm choke doesn't work. Even if he buries his chin, I'm not going to be nice. Right? I reach, same thing. You want to get as much as possible the elbow to the chin level or the chin line, right? Release, slide it right back, protect, pinch, push, and expand your chest. Third option, and this is the tricky one, guys. This takes a lot of feel and a lot of work, but it's excellent for combining the two submissions. I'm attacking a choke. At the same time I'm attacking the choke, I'm gonna armbar him. Now it's important, you keep his arm from escaping your legs. So the way I like to do it is I like to drag my heel, so turn it around, drag my heel down to the wrist, keeping my legs or my knees slightly pinched. Now as soon as I feel that his elbow, and it's a feel thing, as soon as I feel that his elbow is in the crook of my hip, without releasing the wrist, I'm gonna open my knees slightly and lift my hips. Now if he turns his wrist, the one thing, and I mentioned this in my workshop, when you do an arm bar, you have to immobilize the shoulder, which I'm doing pretty much with my crucifix position. He really can't escape the shoulder from this position. And I have to immobilize the wrist. Because I have no hand out here, to immobilize the wrist, I have to do minor adjustments depending on how much his wrist can turn, because it can turn, right? So I just have to feel it 
Now his elbow I know is pointed slightly this way, so I'm gonna apply the pressure in that direction. But you see that I keep everything tight. Try to get your wrist back. It can move as long as I adjust, oh, <laughs> right, and follow it, it's gonna be there. Watch out when you try to squirm, because the pressure's yeah. on and it popped, it, it, it popped the other way. Mm -hmm. But it pops all the time, because it means okay, but I'm just gonna, you guys. Exactly, be careful with your partners. This can come on quick, right? Especially considering it's the, the strength of my legs against his single arm. That's your Yep. Mm -hmm. So when I'm attacking this choke, the only thing he's worried about is this choke. And I'm attacking the arm. The last one, again, is tricky. It takes a certain amount of feel, right? But once you practice it enough, you'll start getting that feel. You'll start recognizing without being able to see something or feel it with your hands where the elbow positioning is. Got it? Let's try it. One, two, three. Right now I'm gonna show you a couple of escapes from crucifix, right? There's always an escape from anything, as long as you get it fast enough, right? If you put yourself in the hole, that's on you. But with the crucifix, and like I said in my workshop, for every escape, the main principles are you're manipulating their angle of control by moving your own body or moving theirs, right? In order for him to have great control over me, I have to be in this perpendicular angle, right? There you go. Now, there's one escape that I'm going to show you that's pretty standard. It's the first escape that I learned. Like I said before, his body needs to be underneath my, my head, right? If I can get my body off of him, and I can do a back roll, that's a one-on-one escape. But it depends on them not having full control over you, right? And sometimes you can't do a back roll. Sometimes your mobility is limited. But just to show that one again, right? His body's underneath me. I can't back roll here. I have to get my back to the mat and see how I escaped my head away from the control of his body. When I escape my head, see how his chicken wing looks? It's changed the angle of his control on my chicken wing too. His legs, now I have a little bit of mobility. I can turn my elbow down towards my body, my wrist up, kind of like a hitchhiker escape, right? Now from here, I'm gonna just kick my legs up and do a backwards. You saw he held on to my arm. Because of the angle at which I landed, he has no control over it. I can just flick it off, right? So for those of you who want to do this, feel free. This is the first escape I learned. It's fine, but sometimes it doesn't work. Escape out, elbow comes down, back roll over. Flick it out. Now I'm, he's in a really great position. <laughs> Bad day for him. Option number two, and I think this is more realistic. Same principle applies. He needs his head on this side of my, my arm, right? And he needs this perpendicular angle in order to choke me, in order to arm bar. If I change the angle, so we're in a per perpendicular position, if I change the angle here, look at the choke. It's not there. Arm bar's not there. Now from here, I can grab the, the legs, Hip escape up, he's not going to let me. But at the very least, I'm going to have a half guard. Right? Come up. And I've escaped. Now, like I said, he needs these angles. Right? If I let him have these angles, he's going to choke me. If I change the angles, now his head isn't quite so much on this side of my shoulder. Now he doesn't have the leverage he needs to put that, that choke on. He can try. It's going to be hard, especially if I'm protecting. And see how my, my chin has dove underneath his bicep? There's no choke there. 
The choking from the single arm choke comes from the blade of the arm. I'm just aligning my chin against the blade of the arm. So the, the single arm's not there. The rear naked choke isn't there because he needs this angle. He needs to get his body like this. No, that's fine. Revenge. If I'm here and my back's on the mat, he doesn't have the angle that he needs for the, the rear naked choke, right? For the arm bar. Same thing. He needs to be able to isolate my arm away from my body. If I bring my own body to it and trap his legs, I'm controlling his legs and I'm preventing him from having that angle in which I can, he can arm bar me. Does that make sense? Any questions? Yes. Uh, there. So again, he has the chicken wing, right? He's in a perpendicular angle. I'm just manipulating my body, so now we're kind of in a parallel angle. He doesn't have the single arm choke. I bury my chin. He doesn't have the rear naked choke. I adjust my body, trap one or both of his legs, it doesn't matter. Now we're actually in a better position. He's not on my back, he's in my guard. And now I can attack him. Got it? Now let's play with them both. We have about 15 minutes. I want one person, or use about five minutes to work on those escapes, and then you're gonna rotate through. So work on the entries all the way to the submissions. Bottom person try to escape, right? Switch top to bottom each turn. Got it? Questions? Questions? One, two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you change the angle by like, moving your hips and turning them? Can a person who has a crucifix just shrimp out to. Oh, they prevent? can definitely follow you. Okay. Right. It's who gets there first. Okay. <laughs> Same thing for, um, for any escape. You know, you can try to escape and they can anticipate the escape and respond to your escape. They're not just gonna wait for you yeah. to escape, okay. right? So you gotta escape, get to your control position, and then work from there before they can react. Yeah, okay. One, two, three. <laughs> Let's keep it fresh in your mind. Maybe you were doing them and you, you forgot a couple of steps. So I'm just gonna review them really quick. We're not gonna, it's the end of class, but I just want to stress the my jiu-jitsu relies a lot on feel. I have a lot of technique, but I work principally on principles. <laughs> so, when we go to the triangle, right, sometimes they're going to react a little differently, right? Sometimes their elbows are going to be in a different position. I'm going to monopolize on that. Knowing that in order to get into the triangle, my back, or my, my torso has to be across his back. I have to trap this arm. You don't have to chicken wing, you can do whatever you want. And my legs have to trap this arm. I like to be on my back. But you don't have to. You can finish it right from here. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> right? So first entry, we're turtle position. We have our weight on him, pushing slightly, right? Nice hand, comes in. I got a question. How do you find the wrist? The wrist is on the end of the arm, right? You just feel it all the way down. Good question though. I mean, no question is a bad question. <laughs> if he doesn't take the bait, I'm gonna force it, right? But I don't force it to the point that it's causing, I'm expending more energy than he is, right? If he really doesn't want it, he's not protecting some other position, right? Always have plan A, B, C, and D all the way to Z. Use my, my knee, pop my hips back, use my body to pry that elbow in. Trap it. Now I can either roll. Now remember, we're rolling over our chicken wing arm. If we roll like this, it's gonna be hard. You're gonna be able to do it eventually, but he has an opportunity to escape, and you're gonna expend a lot of energy. I believe in lazy jiu-jitsu. Right? The least amount of energy that I can expend, the better for me, especially against a larger opponent. Roll over this arm. Now I'm here. 
I have three options for submission. Single arm choke, right? Grab the trap, not the shoulder. The shoulder, you start getting the meaty part of your arm involved. You want this nice sharp blade right here from the wrist to halfway to the arm. Elbow comes from the front to the back. It's not gonna make it there, but in the process of trying to do that, you're gonna choke him. Rear naked choke, all the way, as much as you can get the elbow squared up with the, the chin. Release the arm, slide it, don't expose it, because now he has an arm free. You're gonna slide it back, protect it with your chin, pinch your elbows, expand your chest, and push his head into <coughs> the choke. The same time you're attacking a single arm, you're gonna manipulate the arm. Again, it's a feel thing. I got a couple questions, which leg is on top? For me, it doesn't matter. For you, maybe it does. Play with it, see what works for you. But the most important thing is finding, main, or uh, isolating the wrist as much as possible, right? Pinching your knees, finding where the elbow's pointed. The elbow's pointed down and that way. So I'm gonna adjust my hips to apply the pressure. If he turns his, his thumb anywhere, really, now the elbow's pointed in a different direction. I adjust my hips, apply pressure. It's a feel thing. He escapes, or I escape from this position. There's the camera. <laughs> so I have one escape, is he needs his, or he needs, <laughs> he needs my body on his chest, right? So I gotta take my body off his chest, my head comes down, I do a back roll. He can flick this off. I had a question. What if he maintains the Kimura grip, right? <laughs> he has that Kimura, right? Now you're defending the Kimura from top. It's a different, different defense, right? But you're out from underneath his crucifix. That was the escape. Second option, change the angle. He's really strong here. He has a nice angle for a choke. I'm gonna take that angle away by moving my own body, right? He doesn't have the single arm choke. He doesn't have the rear naked choke. Now, I'm gonna fish for his legs however I can. When you're in this position, you're desperate. Don't think of what's correct. What's the correct leg to, to reach for? Just grab something. He's gonna react exactly like that. He, know he's, he knows he lost the crucifix position. He's not just gonna hang out there. He's gonna try to get up onto top position. I gotta beat him to it. It's a scramble. Got it? Well, thank you for allowing me to teach one of my favorite series. Crucifix is amazing. Like I said, it's my body against just this part of his body, <laughs> right? The odds are in my favor. And if you know how to work it, if you know the escapes, if you know how to manipulate the arm and how to get back to where you have greater control, you're gonna be a lot more successful with it. So thank you, enjoy your lunch.